Welcome to Studio 5. George Foreman, Judy Bloom, and Chevalier, all three are on deck for today's show, and we can't wait to show you exactly how. So let's get things started, and we begin with our countdown of the top five stories making headlines in the world of uplifting entertainment. First up, number four and number five. At number five, we take you to a grand tent in Texas. His Story the Musical is an upcoming theatrical event premiering in Dallas this spring. It's a Broadway-style musical with a story of love and redemption based on the life of Jesus, who performs miracles, gives wisdom, and connects people from all walks of life. Willie and Corey Robertson from the hit reality show Duck Dynasty are the producers of the musical. You may not think of Broadway-style musicals and myself, but uh, <laughs> it's about Jesus, uh, uh, that is the connection. Uh, that has uh, that brought us uh, a part of it, and uh, Corey and I were able to watch it and uh, uh, last year, and we're just blown away and said, we want to be involved in this for sure. So believe it or not, when Willie got the first song, he was sent a, one of the songs on a video through a text, and he came to me, he watched it first, and came to me with like tears brimming in his eyes, and I was like, what? What just happened? He's like, I just saw this song from a musical, and like, it's incredible. I'm really sure this is the Messiah we've been waiting so long for. Tickets are on sale now, and you can get them at HisStoryTheMusical.com. At number four, we take you to Pennsylvania and the stages of Sight and Sound Theater for a big announcement on its next production. The biblical story of Daniel hits the stage in March of 2024. Number three in the countdown is coming up in just a little bit. We turn now to the sports biopic, Big George Foreman. He's still one of boxing's biggest personalities and his journey to that stage is one that begins in severe poverty with anger issues, a near death experience and a walk of faith that took him from the boxing ring to the pulpit. The impossible dream has happened. Heavyweight history has happened. The winner, and once again, heavyweight champion of the world, Big George Foreman. It's been nearly 30 years since George Foreman's historic return to the ring to become the world's oldest heavyweight champion at age 45, and he is still one of boxing's biggest personalities. When I made my comeback into boxing, mm -hmm. I was ready to go and my wife didn't like it at all. I know. But she had a vision that I was gonna become heavyweight champion of the world. We never forgot that vision. Mm -hmm. And she had to be reminded of it as well, that I was heavyweight champ of the world. That kept me fighting, that kept me fighting. His fight for the two-time championship dream Big George Foreman, the miraculous story of the once and future heavyweight champion of the world is now a story for the silver screen. Hey, fella, come on and enjoy yourself. Power company said we never paid the bill. Really? There's only two things I know how to do. That's box and preach. And preach you won't pay the bills. You made me something once, Doc. You can do it again. It is my destiny to win the heavyweight championship belt again. Last time they saw me, I looked like Superman. So now you look like the Michelin Man. This ain't no beauty contest. What was that process like? I mean, I can't imagine being that old and saying, okay, I'm gonna get back into the ring. And when you get to the age I was at, man, past <laughs> middle age, and becoming a grandpa and all of that, you got to really believe in what God tells you. Mm. And so I fought to make sure no one would take that dream away from me. There are two fights going on in the film. There's the physical fight, but there's also a spiritual fight. What do you remember most about the spiritual fight? Is it still vivid? In every battle, the greatest foe that we will combat is in here. I didn't believe in God. I really didn't believe there was a living God. I knew there were stories about it. Wow. My mom would talk about it, but it was like, that's for poor people. That's not going to happen. That's not really real. Mm. And so I'm in a dressing room after uh, 
my last boxing match in 77 where, mm. man, I, I found out that's really a living God. The fight was over then. It was a knockout. God had me. <laughs> More than 40 years after that God knockout. Who said that? Nobody said nothing, George. George, 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 George. Oh, George. 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 Your heart stopped. You thought he was dead. I was. Foreman's faith remains at the forefront of his heart as a mentor and minister. What was it about the call? How did the call of God come to you? Was it in that moment that you knew immediately you wanted to preach? What happened? After thing one Puerto Rican, I had that experience where I was dead and alive again, screaming in that dressing room, Jesus Christ is coming alive in me. I thought it would just go away. Maybe I was hit too hard, mm -hmm. uh, too many punches or whatever. But it never left me. The smell of death when I died in that dressing room, it has never left me to this day. And I wanted to make certain that everyone I met would know would know the story of Jesus Christ. Forget about George Foreman. I'm not going to box anymore. Do you know what you're walking away from, son? And I want to spread the word of God and what I saw. It's also why he's sharing his story, the highs and the lows. Was there anything painful to relive in telling it? There was a painful part in the movie. My mom moving around, she always moved around. Mm -hmm. And I would go into these homes and there was this rusty refrigerator, rusty stove, and we'd always run into. People would leave those houses before we moved in, mm -hmm. and they would leave these refrigerators and stoves, and most of them never worked. Mm -hmm. And I, I cried when I saw that because I had forgotten about it. You live one way your whole life. Heavenly Father, thank you for this food. George should change his name from poor man to poor man. <laughs> to hurt. What's my name now, fool? What about the absent father? And, you know, the growing up without a father, that was touching. But my mother seemed to occupy, you know, like she would love you, hug you with one hand, mm -hmm. spank you with the other. <laughs> I'm going to be mom and dad to you. You're going to be a good boy. She did the best she could. What's life like for you today? You're still preaching? I'm still a full-time evangelist with the Church <laughs> of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what I do. That is my profession. Mm. I moonlight it as a grill salesman and as a boxer for a long time, but my f profession has always been that of a preacher. His latest pulpit. Can Muhammad Ali dance and stay away from Foreman after what Foreman did to Frazier? Sharing his Big George Foreman story on the big screen. That's a look at Big George Foreman. It's in theaters this weekend, beginning Friday, April 28th. You should make plans to see it. Still ahead. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. A Judy Bloom classic comes to the big screen. From my understanding, many people have wanted to make this a movie for a while, and Judy has said no. But you got a yes. Okay, great. The film's director joins us with a look at why the author said yes to making the movie. At number three. Something about you seems different. I can't quite figure it out. She got legs, you idiot. Buzz builds around Disney's next big adventure on the big screen. The new Little Mermaid dolls are here. Mattel out with its latest line to match the actors playing the beloved characters in the new live action movie. Halle Bailey plays the title character alongside Javier Bardem's King Triton and Melissa McCarthy's Ursula. This? is the new Little Mermaid doll. Bailey introducing the dolls and choking up on social media. The Little Mermaid, a Disney film, hits theaters May 26th. Someday I'll be part of your At number two. I've been beating statistics my whole life, so I like my chances here. Big news from the NFL player who moved a nation to its knees in prayer. Buffalo Bills player DeMar Hamlin has confirmed he will return to football, the sport that nearly killed him three months ago. Bills management said Hamlin met with three specialists in the offseason, and all of them agreed he was ready to play. They almost lost me. Like, I, I died on national TV in front of the whole world. The diagnosis of pretty much what happened to me was basically commodio cordis. It's a direct blow at a specific point in your heartbeat that causes cardiac arrest. This event was life-changing, but it's not the end of my story. My heart is still in the game. Uh, I love the game. 
Um, it, it's something I want to prove to myself, not nobody else. With that, we've got just one more headline in this week's countdown. We'll get to it in just a little bit. Up next in this week's rundown is Judy Bloom's Are You There, God? It's Me, Margaret. The beloved and sometimes controversial novel aimed at middle school girls is now a big screen film. For some 50 years, Bloom has denied requests to bring the story to the silver screen. But when Kelly Foreman Craig made the request, Bloom said yes. And Craig is with us today to share the story behind the story. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. A lot of the topics that are throughout the movie are what a lot of people deal with. Please, just do this one thing for me. Let me just be normal and regular like everybody else. Just please, 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 please. The book was written in 1970, but I think the themes in the book are timeless. Incredible. What are those boxes for? Don't worry about that. I want to hear more about camp. What else you learned? What else did you do? You're moving. What? Really, Mom? Sylvia. Oh, you wow. promised. I'm moving? You know, I didn't know what I was doing when I wrote Are You There, God Is Me, Margaret. I just knew that for the first time, I wanted to um, really tell the truth. It was my truth. I wanted to be honest, it was my honesty, of what it was like to be in sixth grade. I've decided I want you to join my secret club. It's time traveling into a completely different era, and it's really, it's really cool to just see all of the knickknacks and little things. I'm learning so much about the 70s. Are you okay? You can tell me the truth. Ah! Fine, good. Yes, we have the Campus Improvement Committee. Any volunteers? Social Committee, Fundraising Committee. <sighs> and how are you? I read that when you don't have any loved ones around, your life expectancy drops drastically, but you know, I've had a good run. Life is a little bit strange, and that that's all right. There can be um, some laughter attached to that and, and to the awkwardness of, of being a person. <laughs> it's tiring so hard all the time, doesn't it? Margaret is really about just finding yourself and finding your voice and just figuring everything out from religion to, to boys to everything, all of the changes that Margaret goes through. And that's what connects us. We're all changing. We're all just figuring ourselves out. From my understanding, many people have wanted to make this a movie for a while and Judy has said no. But you got a yes. Yeah, I feel I'm so grateful that she said yes and that she changed her mind. I reached out to her with a, a very passionate letter about how much her books meant to me, uh, what a lifeline she was to me when I was that age, because she was telling the truth. You know, she really told you the truth about what it felt like growing up. Going in, what was your personal mission for it? What was the, the driving force for you? I was so struck by Margaret's spiritual journey. I was so struck by that, by that curiosity, you know, um, by the way that um, as, as all of life and her body is changing at once, she reaches out for something greater, for a faith in something, and she doesn't mm -hmm. quite know where to find it or what to name it but she starts to develop this relationship with something and she finds God, you know, alone in her room. And I thought that was so beautiful. And I think it's very, I think it's highly individual, you know, um, where each of us feel a, a sense of something greater. And I loved seeing this kid um, search for it in such an earnest way. I, I was touched and moved by just the simplicity at which she finds it because we all tend to make it so complicated and i feel like she, she it can be so easy <laughs> yes <laughs> yes i love that she's you know i love that she's struggling to find it in these you know in the sort of traditional places yeah but she finds it alone in her room she finds she finds it in the quiet 
in the quiet moments, you know, and that's so beautiful and moving to me. It was such a gorgeous depiction of that search for something larger. Are you there, God? It's me, Margaret, is in theaters this weekend. With that, we have made it to a photographic moment here on Studio 5. Here is this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. A look back at a life well lived. Legendary singer, actor, and activist Harry Belafonte died this week at age 96. His historic rise in show business came in the 1950s at the height of segregation. Belafonte was born in Harlem to West Indian immigrants. That influence ignited his love for Caribbean music, heard in hit records like Deo and Jamaica Farewell. Singing success brought movie offers, making Belafonte the first black actor to see major success in Hollywood as a leading man, a platform he used to fight for civil rights. His life in photograph is this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Coming up next. And of course the music will be spectacular. Boom. Snapshots from the pages of a long forgotten real life musical story. We were building a man whose history has been erased. Get a Studio 5 first look at Chevalier. Welcome back. Turn to the pages of music history and you may or may not find the name Chevalier. For those who do know him, he's often called the Black Mozart. And he had a fascinating life that's now the heart of a movie. A lot of this history is not known. Music school, his name was never mentioned. Here's a man who undoubtedly is one of the most incredible composers of all time. We were building a man whose history has been erased. And of course the music will be spectacular. Bold. When I heard about him and that he was a composer of classical music who was mixed race and born in Guadeloupe and was living in Paris, I was really struck that there would be some guy whose background was in any way similar to mine who was writing back in the time of Mozart. May I play with you, monsieur? Chevalier's musical imprint on the world at the time and his contemporaries was huge. He, in fact, is reputed to have shared an apartment with Mozart, who is about 13 years younger than Joseph. I hope this won't be embarrassing for you. It's crazy that he preceded Mozart and now the article comes up and says the black Mozart, as if he came up after, as if he like was copying Mozart or any of that. There are some really tricky, showy passages in his writing. Many violinists have expressed to me just how fun and surprisingly challenging it is to play. The thing that was so heartbreaking when I was doing research about him is learning about how much of his music was lost. With Napoleon purposely destroying a lot of his music. I'm putting on a concert. Let us fund the revolution. With that, there's so much of his genius that will never be found again. And so there are pieces that I would see on his catalog list that maybe even survived that destruction, but nobody's ever recorded them. We think of classical music as being old fashioned or for high society. But at the time, that was the art of the day. That's the top 40. It's pulling from all these different references of these black rock stars that we love and adore and giving it to Joseph as he was the rock star of his time. It's important for the audience to see his story taking place inside that understanding. He can shred on his axe just the way any guitarist could. Making his name as ubiquitous as any other great composer. I think that can only be done by making sure that we're playing his music, we're recording his music, and furthering that, and talking about it for sure. I really am honored to have a chance to tell his story. He's not a made-up character, he's a real guy. I'm so glad that it's coming to the screen and people need to know about him. Chevalier had its world premiere last September at TIFF, the Toronto International Film Festival. It's available now for you to see in theaters right here in the United States. With that, we have made it to our top story in this week's uplifting entertainment countdown. So here's a look at what finished in the number one spot. At number one. 
We travel to Zambia, where Arizona Cardinal offensive tackle Kelvin Beecham is at work off the field with World Vision, helping to deliver clean water wells to areas in desperate need. Clean water is foundational. Um, you know, it, it sets the stage for everything. Beecham serves as an ambassador for the organization. Water is freedom. So you can't get to some of the other issues that are surrounding some of the families and some of the challenges without actually talking about access to water. We talk about the symptoms quite a bit. We talk about diseases, we talk about um, diarrhea, we talk about malnutrition. All those things stem from clean water. And if you have access to clean water, you're at least able to put yourself or help individuals put themselves in a position um, to just have a good start. And rolling up his sleeves to work brings him joy. It was amazing just to feel the, the ownership, the energy, the smiles, um, and I think this is a different type of smile than just, hey, I'm happy, but just overjoyed with the ability to have access to water. Um, for me, that was, that, that was, that was, it took you to, it took a, it was a different type of high. Just moments away. That's all you got, George? Come on. Climbing back into the ring with the real life George Foreman for a final life lesson from the pages of his life. Welcome back to Studio 5. Music fuels this production every week, and this week it's Dwan Hill. He's behind the scenes of many hits from the likes of Lauren Daigle and CeCe Winans, but he's front and center on this tune. Take a listen, and you'll hear why Mansion is what's playing in my ear this week. I'm gonna get there, bye bye, oh Lord. It sounds too good to believe. Thank you, Duan, for that happy tune. We are just about out of time for this week's Studio 5, so let's pause for just a little bit and fast forward to see what's on next week's rundown. I just would have to say that being a mother and being able to have the opportunity to come into this role has been one of the greatest challenges, but one of the most rewarding things that the father has ever allowed me to participate in. She's the wife of recording artist Travis Green, a mother, pastor, dentist, and author. Dr. Jackie Green joins us with her latest book, permission to live free, living the life God created you for. The way has already been made for you. That freedom belongs to you. It's not something that you gotta fight to go get. He won your war on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. We hope you'll join us for that story and so much more come next week. Right now we've got time for just one more thing and that is a final word. And we're giving that to husband, father, boxer, and pastor, George Foreman. What lesson do you want young people to take away from your life story? Because we see you go through bullying and your response. What do you want them to take away from this? Well, especially during life, the George Foreman story is about a bully converting himself, finding God, and a person who was being bullied, finding God to make certain he has strength to withstand all the things that will come after him. That's something for young people in this movie. Mm -hmm. What would you go back and tell young little George, if we could, little George, today knowing all that you know and what you've accomplished? What would you say to that little boy? You go, if I had a chance to go back and tell anyone, every, especially young people, about what happened with my life, Sunday school lessons were real. Mm. They weren't just things being pressed up on you. It was actually real and those lessons can help you in life. Do you see any of you coming through in your children and grandchildren? I, I like my children and my grandkids. Some of them are persistent. Mm. They're trying to make and they don't know where the ambition has come from. And I do believe it has come from within something I gave them. Big George Foreman, thank you. That is a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you and then come on back, see where Studio 5 takes you next week. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye, everybody.